Hi everyone, welcome back to our weekly study. I'm glad that you're joining with us. Today we are going to begin chapter 29 of Genesis. Just as a little bit of background, um, if you're joining us today, we have been discussing now the story of Jacob. We've been focusing in on his character. Remember, he maneuvers his way um, to get the birthright and the blessing and then needs to flee. Um, and we, learn, we learned last week, and we thought about last week, the, the first scene that we learned about him when he was on the run, um, about um, camping out um, and his dream, and his dream of the latter. And we discussed that and his then relationship with God going forward. Now we learn about this next story, um, where Jacob um, comes to a town and is at a well. Um, and there he will meet his future wife, Rachel. Um, and so we'll learn a bit about that story. Um, and delve into it. So I hope you stay with us as we read through um, the first 11 verses of chapter 29 and then discuss them together. Jacob resumed his journey and came to the land of the Easterners. There before his eyes was a well in the open. Three flocks of sheep were lying there beside it, for the flocks were watered from that well. The stone on the mouth of the well was large. When all the flocks were gathered there, the stone would be rolled from the mouth of the well and the sheep watered. Then the stone would be put back in its place on the mouth of the well. Jacob said to them, My friends, where are you from? And they said, We are from Haran. He said to them, Do you know Lavan, the son of Nahor? And they said, Yes, we do. He continued, Is he well? They answered, Yes, he is. And there is his daughter, Rachel, coming with the flock. He said, It is still broad daylight, too early to round up the animals, water the flock, and take them to pasture. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are rounded up. Then the stone is rolled off the mouth of the well, and we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's flock, for she was a shepherdess. And when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of his uncle Lavan, and the flock of his uncle Lavan, Jacob went up and rolled the stone off the mouth of the well and watered the flock of his lunk uncle Lavan. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and broke into tears. So let me briefly summarize what we um, studied in this small section of chapter 29. Jacob makes his way to a new area. He finds a well. Um, at the well, there are already some shepherds gathering with their flocks. Um, and it seems to be that the custom of this place, as we'll discuss a little bit further, is that um, they don't just um, open up the, the well to, to draw out water, but they do it at a specific time. There happens to be a large stone that's on top of the well that's um, kind of blocking them from doing so. Again, we'll discuss the details of that in just a moment. Um, Jacob um, introduces himself wonders about where he is and if the people, those, these shepherds, these men, um, know about his, um, his uncle, Lavan, um, and they say they do. Um, and then at that moment, um, Rachel is coming. Rachel is coming, who is from the family of Lavan. Remember, um, Jacob is sent out on this mission, um, one, to run away from Esau, but secondly, to um, find a wife, and finds out that this, is going, this Rachel is a, is, a, is a member of his family, someone who he's hoping to marry. Um, he sees her, he's overcome with emotion, it seems, um, runs and lifts the stone off the well, gives her water and kisses her and breaks into tears. Okay, so that's the story um, up front for now. So now let's think about it um, and dive in a little bit deeper. Um, the well, the well is a place where people meet, especially in um, the land of Israel, or in the Middle East where we um, deal with um, a number of areas that are arid and dry, um, wells are sources of life, places where you can draw out water. Um, and as a result, it's also a place of gathering. It is where communities gather, where individuals come together so that they can draw water out of the well and sustain themselves, um, but also because this is a place where life happens. And so the well is a very important place. Um, and in the Bible, the well is a place of meeting. Um, but not only just meeting individuals, but meeting your loved one. Um, you can think about it in some ways metaphorically or allegorically that the well being a source of life is where more life is created, where you meet your life's partner, 
um, and eventually um, procreate and create more life with that person that you love. Um, and so if we we'll remember, it was the servant of Abraham, Eliezer, who meets um, Rebecca at the well. If we remember that from a number of weeks, probably months ago when we studied, um, where he has this kind of whole back and forth if she offers to feed the drink, give the camels water before he gives him, then he'll know, then Eliezer the servant will know that this is the right wife for Isaac. Um, and so we know about this, that story of the well. We know about this story of the well with Jacob and Rachel. We know then later on in the book of Exodus, Moses will meet his wife Tzipora at a well as well. Um, as well. <laughs> a well as well. <laughs> um, so the well is a place of gathering, a place of meeting, a place of marriage and connection. Um, it's so interesting. The, uh, a commentary points out that it connects these first two stories about Jacob together. Um, and that one of the images that um, connects these two together is, are stones. Remember back in the end of chapter 28, that first story that we read, um, Jacob came upon some stones and set them up for the night. Um, when he was going to rest, and then that's where the dream happened. Um, and here he sees another stone that's sitting on the, um, kind of on the lip of the, of the well. So stones and dealing with stones is something that's um, um, coming up here again. Um, what you make of it, I'm not exactly sure, um, but it's something about, cont I, well, before I say what I'm going to say, I'd be curious to, to know what your thoughts are. What connects, what is the connection of the stone from here to the last story to this story, what, what is important about the stone? I think for me, what I, what I take from it is that um, Jacob is contending with nature. He's trying to maneuver his way around. He's trying to find his place um, in the world, in his relationship to God and in his family. Um, and the stone in some ways represents something that is a force that he needs to kind of move against. And so perhaps in that way, that's why the stone emerges and comes up in these stories as well as a uh, symbolizing um, the strength and the um, journey that Jacob needs to go through. Um, and so they say, the, 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 the shepherds say um, that they're not going to roll back the, the stone from the mouth of the well. Um, perhaps it's too heavy. Perhaps it's just the custom of the place to wait for everyone, all of the shepherds to gather so that they can all equally partake in the water. I'm imagining if, again, that water is a scarce resource, um, you wouldn't want someone to be able to just come and quickly take um, water for themselves and not leave anyone for enough for anyone else. So what you have installed instead, communally, is a large stone that's super heavy that an individual cannot carry themselves but needs others to. So you have to then wait for others to join you at the well so that everyone can then lift up the stone and that everyone would then be able to equally participate. So that's just an interesting, I think, um, kind of historical reality to add to the story. So Jacob is curious um, where these people are from, if they know his uncle Lavan, they say they do. Um, and so that gives, um, that gives Jacob, I think, a sense of comfort um, that he's amongst people that know his family. And they say, yeah, and actually his daughter Rachel is coming right now. Um, and so, I think Jacob at that point wants to have an alone time with Rachel. He wants to, so he says, "Hey, shepherds, why don't you go fill it up so I can fill up your water so I can go talk to Rachel?" Um, but they say, "No, we're not going to do that because we need to follow our customs." Um, so, so seized and moved by the moment, um, by his seeing Rachel, we learn later that she's a very beautiful woman. Um, that Jacob um, kind of throws away, defers with the local custom, and just runs up by himself and picks up the stone from the, from the well. Um, one, it could be it's teaching us that Jacob is a very strong person. He's able to do what, as we explained before, perhaps it might have taken a number of people to be able to lift up that stone. Um, I think another way to think about it, and this is, I always love the personal connections that we try to find in these stories, is that sometimes when we see someone, perhaps for the first time, and there's a, a love at first sight. We are moved to do things that are radical, that are dramatic, that are daring, um, that we didn't even know that were within us. So I wonder for us, first I would love to know, um, as you're thinking about this, was there a moment that you, did you have love at first sight? Or perhaps when you met that person that you loved, you saw, you said, this is it, I know it, I can see it. Um, and then I'm curious as well, 
do you remember kind of maybe early on in the relationship where you or your partner did something daring, did something um, that kind of was against the norm, um, but it was a way to show your love. And so I think that's what Jacob's doing here. He is just so overwhelmed and overcome by Rachel um, that he does something. He runs up, he lifts the stone out of, all over the well and um, feeds and gives, um, gives her and her flock um, water. Um, and then he kisses her. And this is really amazing. This is actually, I think, the only time in the entire Bible, entire Hebrew Bible, where a man kisses a woman that's not his wife or his mother. Yes, Rachel will eventually be his wife, but at this moment he's not. Um, so you'll see some of the kind of more pious commentaries kind of scaling it back a bit. Really, it wasn't a, a kiss on the lips. It was a kiss on the hand or just a kind of a, a salutation, a gesture. But I think just kind of on the face of it, it was, it was a kiss. He was moved. He kissed her. Um, and so I think that's also something um, beautiful that I think we can take it from it. Just this beautiful... Um, love that he has for um, Rachel and that moves him so much to kiss um, to kiss what will be his future wife okay so we'll stop for here um, we'll continue obviously next week as um, Jacob um, goes back with Rachel to to her house and meets Lavan and the story will continue from there but from now we'll pause and we'll continue and pick it up again next week thank you for joining me today